Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for people who know the difference between metal and ceramic. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. What is the difference? I don't know. We don't have the technology, <laughs> Cody. There's no technology advanced enough <laughs> to know. We don't have the technology. What is it? Metal? Or <laughs> ceramic? Pottery? We know we know there are two materials robots can be made out of. Metal, clay, right? We all know this is something we learned in elementary school. You got your clay robots, you got your metal robots, right? Here, here's the more... better question. <laughs> okay. Have you ever heard someone refer to it as ceramics, not in in like an archaeological or some kind of scientific here's i i only ever hear ceramics when it's like ceramics class like in an academic setting you know yeah i feel like that's the only time i hear it that's a better way of putting it the academic not scientific academic Went to ceramics class I, was, I walked past the ceramics classroom it's about the two. Now I know all. These I made people. some garbage in my ceramics class. Yeah. <laughs> like, I gotta keep it forever now. Got a C plus on this. Would you like? Would you like it? Would you like to keep yeah. it? Would you like to smash it? Yeah. Here's the thing. Hmm. All these people are gonna come at us with the ceramic tile. <laughs> no. That's also known as tile. First off, no one's coming at us. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm no, ready. you're right. I mean, it's just tile. I'm ready for 20 years down the line when we're huge and somebody comes back to our original <laughs> podcast. Did you know we passed some kind of with some big milestone in how many podcasts we'd recorded recently and we, we just did absolutely nothing. Oh, I know we passed 100 recently. Yeah, it was 100. That's what it was. Yeah, I we forgot. passed the hundy mark. Um, here's what I think the robot was. I think I've solved it. You know I have all kinds of kitchen gear, kitchen wear, all right? I yeah. have all kinds of it. Among them, I have enamel cast iron. Right? Which is cast iron covered in like a uh, thing, a coating that's uh, of the ceramic variety, right? Right. I think that's what the robot was. It was basically a Le Creuset robot. That's what I think. An oven safe robot. All right, it's kind of robot. You can you can cook them on the stovetop. You can slide them right in the broiler to finish them off. Like multi purpose. Got to yep. hand wash the robot. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, I mean they say, but you could put it you in could, there. Okay. It's just not gonna last. You as could, long. but you know it's like <laughs> if you bought the good one, it's gonna last just as long. You know that's what I'm saying. That's a good point. You're dropping dropping truth bombs over here here's well, the thing <laughs> your mom's always telling you don't wash the cast iron with soap and then you t i'll tell you what <laughs> you go over to your mom's house she's gonna make some cast iron you you hide in the cabinet you watch her when she thinks no one's <laughs> watching she's gonna lather that thing up in <laughs> soap she's gonna slather it up she's gonna throw that ceramic right into the dishwasher she's gonna throw all the knives in there with the fish yeah i ruined some very nice knives once oh. by throwing by uh uh dishwashing them uh if there's fish scales in there it makes it is they'll rust they just no. rust in one dishwasher oh they'll get you it rusts a hole through the knife <gasps> those poor knives yeah but you know what i did hmm. i accepted what I'd done, and I sharpened the notches out of the knife, which took a very long time. I'm so proud of you. You should be. I did it. It's almost time for my semi-annual knife sharpening. It's a special time. It's a special time for all of us. Uh, I'm going to get it professionally done. <laughs> Here's what you understand about Japanese knives, all right? Japanese cooking knives are often sharpened at a different angle than American cooking knives, and I don't feel comfortable sharpening it myself. I'm going to get someone else to do it. Okay. I'm going to spend 
Don't treat myself, don't treat my knife. Mm. Don't I just sharpening? Yeah. Tyler, what do we watch? We watched. Think about it. Don't Castle. get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. I've, I've done it. I've Castle done it in the Sky. Nice. Or the original title. <laughs> Laputa. 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 Castle in the Sky. Which I said the obvious, I think the obvious alternate pronunciation, which I feel like <laughs> is said more than once in the film. Mm-hmm. And I, I swear it's the first time you've heard that. And it it just tickled you pink for the rest of the movie. Oh, it did. <laughs> it just really got you going. It did. If you read it and you speak Spanish, it is a swear word. Like <laughs> It, I was reading some of the fun facts, and it was like, oh, in Spanish it means the whore. And I was like, well, in modern Spanish, I think most people would just say it's the B word. Yeah. Uh, which just, I don't know, I haven't seen this movie since I like learned Spanish. I didn't know. And so to look at it now, to have someone say it, I think Bailey just said it too. Like yeah. she, she walked in and was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, this is, this is the best. Fun fact, um, they came up with the name and everything, and it comes from Gulliver's Travels, which is some book or something. It's anyway, Jack Black. They, oh, yeah, the Jack Black movie. Yeah. Um, anyway, they had, obviously they're Japanese, they had no idea that it's like a swear word in Spanish. They're like, yeah, we would have picked a different title. Like, So that's why like now it's just Castle in the Sky. But, but here's the funny thing. They were like, oh, but <laughs> they have an opening title sequence. With the original title, did they just put the new title on top of that title? They oh, didn't make yeah. a new title screen. They just put the. They just wrote it on. Top. Oh yeah. This here's what's so interesting about the Studio Ghibli movies is like, Hayao Miyazaki has been making bomb animated movies since like the late seventies, and then like no one knew or care about cared about him really until like two thousand two when Spirited Away won Best Picture, and then Disney's like, oh, we got to distribute everything you know so i mean these movies were kind of just sitting there and in the case of this one it was like 15 years later disney's like oh let's dub this and send it to everybody you know yeah can you just go back and make a different still image you gotta slap a graphic on the old uh still image yeah i don't make the rules this is what kills me though about it what it's very obviously you know a very nicely done, very painstakingly done La Puta thing, you know. It's like, oh, it's so done. So you got you, it really makes you pronounce the pew part La of puta. it, right? La Puta. La Puta. But you, you know, it makes that come out. Mm-hmm. It makes it look beautiful. And then Disney's like, here's what we'll do. <laughs> you know that, like, kind of wavy bold text we used on everything in the 90s slap that on there slap it just slap it over that yeah and i'm like this oh you know yeah i know it's like what's the opposite of putting like thousand dollar rims on a a piece of junk car it's the opposite of that uh is putting Not spinning rims on a McLaren. <laughs> there I don't you know. go. <laughs> That's the best I got. It's like you got a Mercedes and you throw a bumper sticker on it. You're like, boom, nailed it. <laughs> there you go. Everyone has to know. Yeah. Because yeah. the stick family on the McLaren, it's not, <laughs> yeah. doesn't fit. Okay. It doesn't don't work. do it. Um. <laughs> oh. Tyler, what were your first impressions? This is, you know, this is what? Your fourth Ghibli experience? Yeah. At this point, somewhere, something like that. Was the was the one that I fell asleep during, I think, <laughs> that we still did a podcast on? Was that a Ghibli one? It's your fa- one of your favorite ones, I know that. Marco Rosso? No, no, I was awake for that one. Uh, Cagliostro? Yeah, Castle Cagliostro. That is a Miyazaki film, yes. Yeah. A lot of Ghibli ones. Here's Ghibli the thing informed yet. about that one. What? I don't, I didn't fall asleep. I did, uh... Stopped paying attention for a whole five and a half seconds and was completely lost the rest of the film. Oh, yeah. Was that one that never got released because the audio was so terrible? 
Yeah, that was actually a good podcast. But we gotta our, we gotta rewatch it with the dub I like better. Yeah, and then do it all again. The you can take another nap. Dub. Non Disney dub. <sighs> I don't know. Disney owns everything. You got the Lupin dub and you got the Wolf dub, and Soon. I think the Wolf dub is the. Eh, it's fine. Soon Disney will acquire us, mm-hmm. and we will become one. We will become part of the MCU. Yeah, so we watched Castle in the Sky. <laughs> do you want to? Do you? Since I I usually do the my garbage rundown on the movie. Do you want to do um, it? Yeah. So, uh, Castle in the Sky tells the story of two young young people. Um, whose fate would have their paths cross a girl of with a mysterious uh, special necklace and a young boy who's always heard the tales of Laputa uh, castle which is a castle that is in the sky um, and they have to oh, overcome pirates uh, the military and uh, bad guys in friendship. to try, try to achieve friendship and no, discover over- the secrets of the castle in the sky Overcome friendship. Oh yes, over, overcome friendship. <laughs> I I did put, <laughs> uh, like at the end of the movie, there's like kind of a long monologue. I don't know, long, you know, there's kind of a thing where you're like, oh, this is what the movie was about, and I was like, that is, that is a quite a moral for a family adventure animated film. Like the Japanese just do it different, you know. Like Disney yeah. movies is like it's about love, it's about friendship, it's good and it's evil, you know, and that's kind of what we do. Yeah, this was like a whole thing, <laughs> and at the end, I was like, "What?" The now, themes of this, there, it's just different. It's a, it's a family movie, but at the same time, it's kind of heady. Like it kind of gets yeah. into it for a while. You're like, "This is, this is out you, there." Are you talking about the uh, the speech that the girl gives, or like the the very obvious, like on the nose, like? This is what it was all about. I think it was the this is all what it was all about one. Okay. I don't know. I won't. No spoilers yet. No spoilers. But, uh, mm, spoilers soon. So I can can get it. Soon. So soon. I liked this one. I will say, of all the Miyazaki movies I've watched, I did enjoy this one still, but it it felt a little longer than I remembered. Because I've seen this one probably twice before. Watching it now, it felt a little. I was surprised. I was like, oh, this is. A very long animated movie, especially for like a family movie, but uh, I do enjoy it. I like uh, I like the Ghibli aesthetic. I like their take on uh, animation and the I like the gags more than anything. This mm-hmm. is a good movie. Plot is pretty intense, but the gags they're here to stay. All right, I'm in it. I'm in it for the gags, among other things. It's a good one though. Yes, yeah, sir. I don't think I liked it as much as uh, Howl's Moving Castle. I was going to say the same Having exact watched, thing. and I, I warned you, if you'll recall, last week we watched Howl's Moving Castle because we had some people that wanted to watch Castle in the Sky, some people wanted Howl's, and I was like, Howl's is better. Like, I think it's a better movie. It also came, you know, 18 years later, so yeah. it's like more experienced animators, newer animation. But And, uh, you know, Christian Bale is just... Everything. Let's be real, though. He's not the star of that movie. Uh, we all know the star of that movie is Calcifer. <laughs> yep. Calcifer. So, uh, so what? Are you ready? Is it time? Yeah, I think it is. Really, if you were to ask me, which you did, I'd say yeah. I say it's time, right now. If you were this to moment. ask me, <laughs> okay. I did say what you did. How? I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're right. You're uh, so far. You are a hundred percent. Like you're uh, right there. I'm batting a hundred right now. You batting a hundred. So uh, how how are we getting to? The, s- the spoilers in the sky. How are we doing it? In a twist, I'm bringing back the crowd favorite, and by crowd, I mean my favorite, the bug sky motorcycle thing. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. Also, 
with some kind of uh, super futuristic jet propulsion technology. Yes. As well as possibly just a bug trapped inside. <laughs> it could just be an exoskeleton that they put on top of a big flying bug and we're like, we made this airship, you know? Yeah. That could be what it is. Here's the thing. I'm getting right into it. I'm getting hot and heavy right <laughs> deep. Deep. Yeah. What is up with the Japanese obsession with air battleships? I don't know. Is it... I don't want to get back into World War II, but if you if you had a nuclear bomb dropped on you, wouldn't you fantasize about, what if we had a giant battleship that prevented... You know, like, what if we range the air skies the same way that the naval the barred web you know what are they called i don't you know i'm gonna be honest i lost the train of what you're saying when you started uh what if we commanded the sky like uh you know yeah i don't know it's like why why is the water never an option i mean it's like I think that's why he answered this film with Porco Rosso later on. You know, he's like, planes in the water. How about that? <laughs> like, well, no, we, we still haven't done the water thing. He's like, no, we did. <laughs> the planes were in the water. And then they get off the water and they're planes. Because um, I feel like even in like animated mo- anime movies, because that's really what they are. Japanese animation Japan style. Japanimation, yes. Japanimation style movies, right? You know, even if it's like, this is normal world, modern day. You're in England. Also, there's an airship right there. And it's like, okay, you're right up till that point. <laughs> then you lost me. Yeah. Every time. I feel it's... Going back to the, the ceramics metal robot, how do they have this airship technology? And they're still like, what is this thing made out of? Well, okay, that's why I'm, I am convinced the metal or ceramics thing is a bad translation. Or it's like they have, all right. it's Proposal. like words that don't, because you know how they're all like, there's no direct translation. It's like, because th- words mean an idea and it's like, there's no word for that because we would just say, we don't know if it's red metal or blue metal or something, all right. you know? Proposal. You and me, let's learn Japanese. All right. Let's rewatch this original Japanese version. Let's, let's get to the bottom of it. Counter proposal. Mm-hmm. Let's just watch the subtitled version. Oh, so are we getting? Hold on, are we getting in the sub dub debate right now, right here? No, no. Here's what we're doing. <laughs> this is what I realized. All right, you're talking about aircrafts. My first note of this movie is just all the aircrafts. You know, all kinds of. There's dirigibles. There's little floaty bug thingies. There's big warships. Like they got it all. There's even kind of normal planes. Maybe. Yeah, I know. Maybe we. Maybe we've talked about this, but I really, it dawned on me before the podcast, Miyazaki is to airplanes as James Cameron is to deep sea. <gasps> right? What? Miyazaki, he's obsessed with the air. Am I wrong? So many of his movies involve the airships. That's what I'm saying. Um, and James Cameron, you know, if he could, they'd all be, uh, you know, whatever, in the sea. I just, I made that connection. Yeah, so many. Look, flying cat bus, girl who flies on a broom. We got the water planes. We got the airships. We got a castle in the sky. Nausicaa does the airships. Um, it's just all of them, you know? All the movies. He's obsessed. He's sick. He's sick. Other thing I noticed about this movie... Miyazaki, I think Europe is just like one country to Miyazaki. He's like, where does this take place? I propose Europe. (laughs) You know that country over yonder? Europe. (laughs) And so every movie, I don't feel like a lot of his movies take place in Japan. They're kind of like these fantastical, generically European adventures, you know? As I said, they are all Italian. (laughs) Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about in Howells. It's like, are we in Austria? Where are we? I think we're in Austria right now, but they'll never say. And it's not Austria. It's a fantasy movie, but it is, right? And this one kind of that, kind of that same feel. Like, where? We're in some sort of a coal town in 
The Valley of Italy. Italy. I mean, sure. The Italians. I mean, the little caps that uh, Patsy wears and whatnot. I was sure. Sure. Yeah, well, Patsu is James Vanderbeek. Mmm. The beak. The beak. Here's the thing about James Vanderbeek. <laughs> did you know him by name before you watched <laughs> Tosh.0? I did not. <laughs> I did not. And here's my question. What did you think of James Vanderbeek as Patsu? Um... His voice. He lent his voice to the beloved character. Yeah. Here's the thing. I can't tell you what's wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Um, I can only tell you that it is wrong. <laughs> here's the thing. I stand by it. I think his voice... Look, now that I know who he is... It feels a little more wrong, but when I first saw the movie and before I knew who he was, I was like, I think that's a great 12 to 15 year old uh, boy, you know? I thought it was a good, I thought it was good. I thought it fit the character. I thought he did a great job. I'm going to be honest. I don't think it didn't fit the character. I think it did. It's like, (sighs) hmm. Do you ever watch a dubbed movie and it's like, or when there's ADR in the movie Mm -hmm. and they didn't go the extra mile when mixing it. So it's very obviously the movie audio and the dialogue audio Mm. are very different audio tracks. Yeah. Like they didn't do any mixing to try to make it sound like it was recorded in the same place. You're like, oh, this was recorded one place and this was recorded in someone's closet yeah somewhere or when there's one that's been like dubbed 30 years later and it's like you know in the background you hear the tv and it's like (laughs) and they're like did you hear what they just said and it's like (laughs) super clear audio and you're like oh god like if you've ever seen like a hard r movie on cable where, like, they have to put in fake swear words for all the real swear words. Right? Like, yeah. Just some guy's like, Ugh. and it's like, mother freak, er. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just like, you're like, oh, that's Samuel Jackson. And then the middle of the word is just some white dude who had to, like, censor this movie was like, freak. <laughs> and just throws that in there. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. But it's, I don't think you're right about that. I feel like all of the audio, like, all the dialogue that was that. And his is just like, Here's what I think. I think he is the best voice actor next to, on par with... Duh, Uncle. Duh, no. Duh. <laughs> duh. 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 Mama. Duh. Duh. Whatever. The, ba- the gang leader. The pirate leader. What's her name? She was the best. You liked her? I liked her. Um, she was very good. I mean, this movie, look, but he spoke. say what you will about aircrafts, but <sighs> Miyazaki can do sky pirates yeah. right. Yeah, he can. It's a great, the doula gang? That's not right. <laughs> what? The, the, the Shiki gang. No, it's, no, it's doula. Doula, yeah. Yeah, she's doula. Yeah, Mama Doula? She was great. Because I think she says it, they're the Dula son or Dola sons or something. D- she Dola. calls themselves the Dula gang at one point. Yeah. But I think she's... So she switches. It's like they call them the just their name and then the their name sons and then the their name and sons or something. Yeah. It switches. Yeah. And then they meet the dad. I uh, love those Sky Pirates, all right? The best. They're the best. And it's a classic Miyazaki twist where you're like, Oh no, the bad guys. And then, like, 40 minutes in, it's like, nah, these are the good guys. And you're like, yeah, they're just rascals. <laughs> yeah. But they're wonderful. I love this. It's a sky pirate gang. And there's the mom, who's the captain. There's the dad, who is the engineer. And, like, 20 dudes that I, I guess are their biological or adoptive sons. Yeah. Um, I think. And they're all just mama boys who wear pink tights. 
yeah. uh, pink capris. Which I'll give it credit because I'm pretty sure when they get on the ship, on the rooster ship, mm-hmm. um, one of the kids says something about it. And the mom, mama mentioned something about like kind of offhandedly being like, yeah, some of them are their kids and some of them just, they're like, they're all, you know, it's, I can't remember what she says, but it is very much like, they're like, these are your sons. They're different colors, you yeah. know? <laughs> and she's like, oh, you know, in a way they're on, you know? Yeah. So stuff like that. It's like, oh, yeah. Um, Which I was like, oh, they didn't have to do that, but they did. Yeah. One of the voice actors in this movie is Mandy Patinkin. I love Mandy. Everyone does. Uh, you may know him from The Princess Bride. Mm-hmm. As Inigo Montoya. And yeah. uh, it made me real happy to know who Mandy Patinkin was. Because I've heard that name so many times, I never connected the dots. Like, oh, that's who Mandy Patinkin is. It's just a fun name to say. Yeah. He was in Princess Bride. Sure were. Um, I don't know about you. I had some Minecraft flashbacks during the beginning of this movie when they go to, when they're in the mine and they're like we didn't have the right material what are we gonna do now and i was like well what if we what if we try mining out to the eastern hills and this, they're like we've gone too far and i was like this uh remember minecraft <laughs> when you're I like do. we've gone too far in the mine there's nothing left for us oh it, this anyway is i just had flashbacks yeah this is why i proposed to you in response to that yeah let's you and me do a minecraft server Okay. Okay. Yeah. And? That's it. <laughs> okay. Because they've got them, and they've got all kinds of stuff now. They've got it now where you get a monthly thing, and it's like, they get you get free little packs and stuff, so you can try different adventure maps and stuff like that. Wow. And what you do is you go in there, and you're like, I want to try this adventure map. And then it's like, okay, here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take your world, I'm just going to save it over here. I'm just going to take it right over here, and I'll save it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna put this right there, and then you play the adventure map, and then they're like, "Oh, here you go. Here's your matter. Here's your world back." Sponsor us, Minecraft. Sponsor us. I would do an audio only Minecraft stream. Mm. Ooh, right. That sounds good. Be a lot of us not talking. <laughs> Focusing. <laughs> a lot of us not talking, then randomly screaming when something terrible happens. Yeah. Yeah. And you uh, snickering to yourself as you like lure a creeper onto somebody's house or something. Oh like that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I come up with a different uh, a different punny name for a horse, you know, <laughs> always always gives me a, a giggle. Uh, so Patsu, what a gentle, tender boy. He just minds his own business. He works on a mine. He's, I think, an orphan. And uh, lives by himself with a bunch of pigeons. He plays the horn. He's making an airplane. His dad disappeared mysteriously. I thought his dad just died. Uh, I think he disappeared uh, and he's dead. So here's the thing. Are you thinking he disappeared when he saw the... Sheeta. She floats her down from the sky. She was being hunted by the pirates. So she fell out of an air blimp. But then her necklace saved her. She floated her down. He catches her. So uh, he saves her, and then uh, they're bonded, you know. From that point on, they're they're bonded, they're children, uh, and we're all shipping them. You know, we're all shipping that relationship. Here's my favorite part about this movie. How, like, every adult is just, just enables their whole thing. They're like, oh, you're children? You're being chased by pirates, one of this stuff? Like, I shouldn't protect you, but I should send you along your way <laughs> you know, just, they're all just like oh yeah we'll fight these parts so you can go escape into the belly of a ginormous mine and you're like oh uh, they just they just all kind of enable they're like yeah no this is what we want collectively as adults we want these children out on an adventure and i loved it i was like this is great yeah this is how all adults should be really it was all a plot yeah. what about the here now before we get too far What's your next note? My next note? Yeah. Well, Patsu's nice, but also an idiot. <laughs> so, so she floats down with well, her he necklace. He's James Vanderbeek. He is, okay, he's the beak. She floats down, her necklace saves her, so he's like, I know what happened. Watch this. He puts the necklace on, and he jumps off a two-story building and is like, see? 
crashes through the roof. You're like, what? You just, what? Yeah. Why, why did you need to test it? Why, why would you? T- I just, would I didn't you understand. Not be curious? Would you not be curious? Oh, I would be curious. Here's my I problem. just wouldn't have jumped off a building. Here's my problem with it, Cody. I say, Ooh. there's a building. You got first floor, second floor, roof. First floor juts out a little bit. He falls through the roof, through the ceiling of the first floor. So he effectively falls two stories, as you said, onto pottery, <laughs> ceramics, ceramics, a pile of ceramic. So ceramic he knew structure. He knew what ceramics were. <laughs> so he falls through that. She goes, oh no, runs 12 feet to the left. Right. And jumps off the roof down onto the second level. Yeah. Uh huh. Seems not less of a distance seems to accurate jump. to me. <laughs> and she's like, oh. But we're all just supposed to sit here and expect and believe. That she's not the crazy one and he's the sane one. He thought he was going to float. She's just like, oh, I need to get down there to help she him. She also climbed out of a window on a moving blimp and fell off. You I'll know? have you know that was a possibly ceramic or metal airship. Would you say it's a dirigible? But it was metal. <laughs> I, I mean, was it? I will call it an air dinghy. <laughs> an air dinghy? Yeah, uh, you know, whatever. They're made for each other. Yeah. Right. Here's the thing. This Let me tell you right now, off the bat, 30 minutes into the episode. <laughs> this is what I thought was going to happen from the opening of the film. Okay. Because the opening of the film, you see the Sky Islands. Mm-hmm. The Skylands. <laughs> floating about. And I'm like, oh, this is a world above world below situation in this world Uh uh-huh and they're all trying to get up like journey the center of the earth yeah yes dinosaurs in the middle of the earth yeah if you've read the book or in my case the great illustrated classic yeah (laughs) you know when you're (laughs) those dumb books why did they even make those because they're the best (laughs) i've read so many books because of those things oh yeah (laughs) oh can you okay let's pause let's talk about that scheme right now yeah you're an author. You're like, what should I do? Write a book? No. I should water down an already written book and hire some other dude to write some pictures about. It. Like, I want that job. The work's been done. All right? Someone wrote a book. Now, yep. all I have to do is make the book a lot smaller. I just have to cut and paste, cut and paste, and then do a couple simpler synonyms for the kitties. And someone pays me? I want that job. Do it. Are they still doing them? I think they've got to still be doing them, There's so many classics. Here's the thing, though. Did you ever read one of those and then read the full book? I don't think so. Because this is what happened to me. Uh, The few times I did that, I read it when I was a kid, and I'm like, as a grown teenager or whatever, I'm going to do it. I'm going to read the real one. And then I'm like... This is the same stuff. <laughs> yeah. So really, it's just like classics with a very aggressive editor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've heard like it's yeah, it's like I'm like 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 Les Miserables. If you read that one, it's like there's the full twelve hundred page version. Then there's like the three hundred page version. Most people read that are like, yeah, it's just all the story stuff instead of a longer story with all these like chapters with just history stuff in it here's the thing you ever read you ever tried to read the game of thrones books oh heavens no oh gosh they're poorly written (laughs) yeah but he's so good at coming up with names he's not it's like jk rowling they're just copied from other books let me float this by you let me float it by you how do you feel about him helping write the story for elden rings All right, you, you know, got good you know Dark Souls. Now imagine George R. R. Martin made the story for that. I mean, his one thing is that he kills people. Yeah. Everybody's like, he's so good at writing political intrigue. But here's the thing: there will be a character, and it's like, this is what's best for you, what's best for me, 
But most importantly, it's what's best for you. And it could hurt me, someone you don't like, in the future. So let's do this thing. And they're like, nah, I'm just going to kill you because you're a beloved character. That's the whole book. Mm. Sp- sorry, I've spoiled the entire storyline of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Everybody's like, they ruined it in the show. Nope, he's never going to finish those books because he knows that was the ending he was going to put in the books. Mm-hmm. Got those hot takes for you. Back to the illustrated classics, <laughs> Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I only have read one or two. Mostly it's just fun to look at the pictures. It's so and see what quote they put under the picture. Because sometimes yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of them There's some kind of funny cartoons. Yeah. It's kind of like a New Yorker uh, car- ca- cartoon where you're like, this caption yeah. and this picture are different. Yeah. I like them. Uh, <laughs> so back to what, whatever we were talking Back to Elden Rings. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Like, those games could... I'm not saying the story isn't good, because the more of them I play, the more I'm like, oh, the story's kind of interesting, kind of like it. But it's such a loose part of what you're doing. You know, I feel like it's really about the gameplay. You're talking about the Dark Souls? And there, Yes, and there is a story there, too, you know? So if you throw George out, I'm like, you might as... I mean, with how loose the story kind of is, it you know, it does, does it even matter? First off, how dare you, sir? There's such a rich history... And you're absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, that that's... story is told through Wikipedia articles and uh, snippets of paper found on the wind. Yeah. There's no story. There's a lot of lore. Yeah. All lore. Which, fun fact, is what George R. R. Martin's books are full of. Yeah. It's like, this son was the son of that son's son, and his son... I killed the other son that had sex with his other son and then they did this <laughs> stuff with the daughter of the son and this son and it's like who are we talking about it's jeff he's dead now <laughs> and it's like why did i need to know this oh guy's yeah lineage? that's jeff his line is gone <laughs> yeah it's been gone for three generations before this story started you know talking you know there's stories that have good royal houses and like the lineage is important and there's how there's books where it's not and I'm saying Castle in the Sky is very important with the lineage and the bloodlines. Mm-hmm. All of George R. R. Martin's books are not. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, this is a... I won't spoil it because there's somebody that would probably send me death threats if I did. But there is somebody that's revealed to be like, oh, they're part of this bloodline. You're like, <gasps> and it mean comes to nothing. It comes to absolutely F all. Okay, It Cody? comes to zilch. <laughs> I know. I put, I, but... But... Compare that to things in the uh, castle in the sky. What do they come to? Everything. Everything. The point of the story. It all matters. Some might say. <sighs> Several things I love about this movie. The first off, I'm going to start doing this in my daily life. When I have a question for someone, I'm going to I'm going to stop telling them question for you. I'm going to start saying query, and then I'll present my question. Remember Howard. that. Yeah. I think, was it a military guy or was it the pirate? One of the sky pirates dressed all fancy. I thought it was the... Must be the military, one of the military. I thought it was the colonel guy, the secret yeah. agent colonel He's like, dude. Quitty. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh was that is the most fanciful and delightful way to start a, to start an interaction. Yeah. I um, immediately went to sequel query. I don't know if that's where you went, but you know. Uh, here's what's important about what you just said. Yeah. Mark Hamill played one good guy. In his whole career, right? Uh, well, he did play him in four movies. <laughs> Is that? It's the same guy. I'm saying it's the same character. Well, te- technically, five, it's five, five movies six. now. Six, right? Because he's he's in, he's in it. Yeah, he's not in it, but he's in it. So seven, one good guy, one franchise, several movies. So he's also the Joker. Is there any other? All right. We're going deep on Mark Hamill's filmography right? really quick. Like, I did, like... He's the I've Joker. Told, I've told you about the interview with him of where people asked him, like, why did you go into voice acting as opposed to, like, you were Luke Skywalker. You could have been, like, the biggest movie star in the world. And his response to that, I don't know, E or something? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Who cares? Nobody remembers their name. They just remember Mark Hamill. Was... 
because he can get fat and go to work in his sweatpants. <laughs> that was his response. And here's my other response. You know, most actors are like, oh, 50, 50 credits, that's pretty good. Like, that's a pretty good, you know, resume. Mark Hamill's in 351 things <laughs> on yeah. IMDb. Like, that's... Yeah. And I mean, almost all of it is animated. I mean, oh my god, I made a mistake because this is the longest... Like, Nick Cage has a huge resume. This is way longer. He's in every video game. Yeah. He's in all of the movies, all the animated things. He's in Dexter's Lab. He's in Rocket Power. What? He's... I mean, obviously, every Batman... Yeah. Wow. Woody Woodpecker. I'm just... Here's the thing. I'm just trying to get to the beginning. Oh, here we go. He's in Partridge Family. He's in a movie called Cannon, Night Gallery, FBI. A lot of TV stuff leading up. Can I, I just want to see where it all starts, you know? Yeah. All right. We got Wizards. Oh, that's just the voice again. Oh. All right. Star Wars. From that, he went to Fred Flintstone and Friends, eight episodes. Corvette Summer, Star Wars Holiday Special, everyone's favorite. Yes. Star Wars, Star Wars. He did a, I mean, Star Wars. Oh, he's in another Miyazaki movie, Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, he's in Castle in the Sky. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, <clears throat> well. Because he's good. Because he here's has the thing. For someone range. who's in, like, one of the biggest franchises of all time. Yeah. He really just is in the smallest credits for the rest of his career. Well, that's, I mean, like I said, I think it's because he likes being a voice actor. So he goes, sits in the booth, and it's like, oh, what, you need, like, a way-in-the-background character for, like, uh, what's that? I'm so, oh, gosh, I was trying to think of, like, a a really small Camp Laszlo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. Give me the line. What's the line? Yeah, all right. Moving on. Moving on. Can I get that one more time? Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> um. Wow. Yeah. What a resume. Yeah. And to be fair, <laughs> the fact that you can roll in at like eleven thirty. Well, just it's like, be like four. It's like four hours of work. You know, like a full session for a voice actor is like four hours. Yeah. I mean, because they make you say every line three different ways for four hours but it's like that's your work day and then you yeah. move, move along you go home you eat some apple jacks and you watch some cartoons yeah and you get to the point where your resume is the length of his and it's not like you're like man i really hope i nail this role it's like you roll into funimation on a random day and you're like what do you got for me and they're like all right the rest of you guys are fired because <laughs> mark hamill showed up <laughs> yeah um yeah i mean sure mark hamill they said he said he based his performance on uh i forget his name he's he plays like the doctor guy in uh frazier so not kelsey Grammer, but one of the one of the guys from frazier i was like oh sure why not be a frazier fan uh tell me who that guy is look Nobody's not a Frasier fan, and nobody is a Frasier fan. We're all part of the Frasier verse. <laughs> uh, this also, so this movie is one of my favorite bits of all time. I think you know what it is, but I have to say it for the folks at home. When, when the pirate and uh, Patsy's boss are about to get into a tussle, his brothers are like, oh, make your shirt explode. <laughs> and he just flexes until his shirt bursts open excellent animating and then coal miner uh pots his bus he does it too it was just so great you're like yeah i i've never been so happy to hear someone say like i just never thought i would get to hear someone say that line and it was uh, it's the gag i'm here for the gags all right the ghibli gags they're they're perfect they work every time yeah well, make your shirt I, explode <laughs> here's the thing <laughs> that he does it I had not thought about this thing that I'm about to say, Cody. But prepare yourself till just this moment. I'm prepared. Why were they in like tuxedos? <laughs> That's never. To be 
unsuspecting. Yeah, like where when they're villains, that's kind of sinister. But when you realize they're just rascals, as you said, yeah, just little scams. I think like they must have been trying to look like legitimate people because if they're running around in sky parrot uniforms, <laughs> no one's going to answer their questions. But if they look like a fancy man, you're like, oh, he's here on business. business? <laughs> he's in coal mining town for business, looking for a child. Yeah. For a little girl? I don't... All right. Let's talk about our heroes, Patsu and Shita. How old are they? 13. 13? That's what I say. It's somewhere between 12 and 15. That's kind of my guess, but... This is the one of the rare movies that we watch that makes me, uh, once again, add Age of Consent in Japan to my Google search history. <laughs> what is it? Technically speaking, 13. <laughs> actually speaking, 18. Kind of. Cool. Here, okay. Since you brought it up, let's get into it. You're a mama's boy, right? Right. Okay. You're a mama's boy. You're a sky pirate. You're up in the sky. There's nothing hotter than an adolescent wearing your mother's clothes. Am I wrong? That was okay. That was a, it. Was a weird sequence of this movie, right? They become friends with the sky pirates. They're on the ship, and Mama Dula is like, look, if you're going to be on the ship, you better work. Patsu, get to work with the engineer, who is my husband or something. And you, you're gonna, we're getting you to work in the kitchen, all right? You're going to work. She <laughs> lends her some of her old pants, which are just enormous, and she ties them up and makes an outfit out of it. And then the dudes are like, wow. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. Yeah, and that's after she made a thing like where... She's like, she's a little delicate flower as she's horking down some ham or what or a roast. Mm -hmm. Like, you gotta mm -hmm. get your boy, you get yourselves a girl like her, cause then she'll grow up to be like me. And they're like, <laughs> she just gonna grow up to be like mom. And it's like they all like look in different directions, like zone out for a second, like, <laughs> like their um, minds have been blown. Well, I, I like how they play it, um, <laughs> because then she's in the kitchen. <laughs> So one of the guys is like, oh, I finished early with my work, and I thought maybe I could, you know, maybe I could lend a hand. She's like, oh, that's so nice of you, you know. Yeah. And then, and then the other guy is there in the corner, already helping, peeling potatoes. Like, what are you doing here? He's like, helping. <laughs> I was yeah, like, oh. like, helping. <laughs> and then, and then it's just fun, you know. Yeah. It's not creepy anymore. It's just fun. You're like, ah, oh, it's it's all, it's all in good fun, good for everyone, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It was such a weird choice, but you know, I respect it. I think they pulled it off. Yeah. They made it fun. They did make it fun. Be Helping. <laughs> it, is, it was so good. So good. It, it, didn't move. it makes me wonder if that guy says anything in the Japanese version or just like grunts or something. Well, that's the thing. I don't know if I... Because he doesn't like look up or anything. He's just kind of still peeling his potatoes like helping. <laughs> I don't know. This guy loves it. Oh, it is. Oh, man. Um, Here's my question to you, Cody. Let's go deep into it. <laughs> Is grown men, we assume they're grown men, maybe they're 13 too. Stop. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe they're 13 year olds with gigantic beards. So uh, the way I see it, there's three possibilities. Yeah. One, you stole my dime. Two, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is SpongeBob. The okay. way I see there are three possibilities. One, you yeah, took my dime. Oh, yeah. Two, you took my dime. <laughs> so, one. <laughs> Mizaki is just slightly horny towards barely technically of age women in Japan. Sure. And has really taken the rest of the country down with him. <laughs> Two, that's just how they are and whatever. Three, that's how they think the rest of the world is. That's how they think Europe is. Exactly. Because this takes place in the country of Europe. <laughs> let's, yeah. Let's keep that in mind as we... Um, I, you know, it's one of those things that's pretty prevalent in anime, especially like, you know, the series, like the, the, uh, the TV shows and stuff. Right. It's pretty prevalent. Like, all the dudes are a little perv. Like, they're not afraid to, like, throw that in an episode, you know? It's just like, eh... Teenage boys, am I right? You know? Right. It's not uncommon. I even saw, I saw a movie last year, and it was like a pretty, a kind of serious, subbed, 
full length Japanese animated feature. And there was even just like one random scene where like the girl just like calls out the dude for like checking her out. And it was just like, and the guy's like, Beerp. and that's kind of how it goes most of the time. <laughs> like there's always yeah. that beerp moment. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's just there. And I don't, I don't know. Is it, is it played mostly for humor? Is it like more acceptable? Is it people just like, yeah, that's just the way it is. And so let's make jokes about it. I don't know. I think, I know part of it is it's more acceptable. It's a big problem because I've seen stuff because they're trying to make it less acceptable <laughs> to be pervy. Yeah. Because in the anime, like, they're not, they're, I don't know if I would classify them as pervy because she didn't, it's like. Oh, they don't she take was it fine there. with it. It's just one of those things, like, in and 2020 they, watching as an adult man. Yeah. In this I era, I was like, this is leading to a terrible place. And then it's just like fun family movie. Like, oh, okay, we're we're fine. We're fine. Yeah. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, you're fine. It's um, fine. It's but in general, fine. <laughs> in general, what's the deal with that? I don't know. Cool. I mean, it's just like, I, I have mean, heard like in Japan, it's I've got heard comedians talk about like performing in Japan. They're like, well, it's, it's just a different like. Like, Mine's... comedy's a little different in Japan, and it's much more, like, physical and slapstick. Yeah. Which like... I think is why they have such crazy game shows and stuff like that. Like, that's a big part of their humor, but... Yeah. There's less, like, language humor and more just, like, physical humor. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, different mindset of everything. Uh, they also have trains where you might get fondled. But at the same time, there's people whose job it is to shove you in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. So, you know, it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> the best of both. All two of the worlds and the best of them. Yeah. Um, let's talk about our dear, uh, sweet uh, protagonist, Shita. Shita. Two things. Her name was originally Shita, <laughs> which... For obvious reasons, they had to change the way you say it in English and the way you spell it. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's fun. like in addition to Laputa being problematic in Spanish, Shita is problematic in English. That's <laughs> just like, yeah, we're doing it. We're hitting, we're hitting all the marks. Translate. It's hard. All right, if you're gonna distribute some in different language. You never know. You never know what's the gonna go is, wrong. There's so many. Like every single Miyazaki movie, they have to change like. At least five of the characters' names, because it's like F boy, and it's like what his <laughs> name? Why? And they're like, what does it mean anything in Japanese? It's like, but you knew, <laughs> like Google yeah. your names first, man. Yeah. Come on, do something here. Oh yeah, um, and Shita is from Gondoa. 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 It's but she, not Gondor. It's not Georgia. It's Gondor. Here's the thing. First time she <laughs> says it, she says Gondor. Then she says Gondola. <laughs> then she says Gondo. <laughs> then she says Gondora. Well, and okay. furthermore, also, I think the place she's based on is supposed to be based on Georgia, like the Eastern European Georgia, you know? Oh, okay. So there you go. So that just ties it all up. <laughs> Which is the, the Eastern European country Georgia is based on the... Southeastern United State, Georgia. Yeah. Which course. is based on the Antarctic State, Georgia. But we're not allowed to talk about that anymore. Yeah. So, uh, here's the real fun thing. Cody, remind me the name of the floating city. Or the castle, if you will. Laputa. There is a book written by Patsu's father. Yeah. All about his adventures to try to find, according to the title of the book, Raputa. (laughs) Oh, no. Which I'm like, this is (laughs) self-racism, man. Which, I've seen it in other movies. I don't know why. I've had it explained to me, and I don't understand the RL thing. Here's the thing. For example, I think when they, sometimes when they translate something from Japanese to English, they swap the R for the L. I don't think they use the L sound in Japan, which is why. So they have the R sound. Okay. Yeah. So, for exa- the best example I can think of is Godzilla. In Japanese, it's Gojira. Yeah. G O D 
G I R A, Gojira, or G O J I R A, Gojira, right? That's what it is in Japanese. They say Gojira. Yeah. And we, but in English, they're like, all right, let's swap the R for an L. It's Godzilla now. Yeah. I think that's what it is. So I think the R and the L is but, for that reason. Okay. That's my understanding. But why is that the As only... a man who doesn't speak Japanese. But why is, that the, why is there one instance of the R and the L swap? Because I know I've heard things they about They don't make like, the Z sound in Spanish. I don't know what I had to tell you. Yeah. I've heard things about like there's no zzz. It's like almost sometimes some people will swap them, like your grandpa swapped it, but your mom didn't. That kind of thing or something like that. Right. Like when they'd be writing in the phonetic alphabet, which they do sometimes. Not okay. Often, right. Yeah. So maybe that's it. I need call Miyazaki up okay. right now. Well, let's talk about English then. How come? What was T's used to be F's? What was it? If you read like old English stuff. Oh, it's a S and F, I think. Yeah, I think S is an F. Because it's Maffachufitz. That's how yeah, I and so it's like there's a. So I've seen that where like I was at a museum with an exhibit, and like, oh, here's like a 1600s Bible, or like that's cool. Why are there so many Fs everywhere? <laughs> like, I know that page, and that is not supposed to be an F. But see, here's my rebuttal for that. What? That was so they could just make one thing for the printing press. All right. Then they just then you used it. Uh, so laziness is that the reason for the? <laughs> I'll accept it if you say it. <laughs> I won't say it. Okay, that was my real big point. I mean, maybe we should probably get into like the big twists and stuff at ah, the end and talk about I don't those. Care about the twists, all right? I care about why is there one instance of Raputa? Oh, man, you know, you know, I don't know. If there had been two. I wouldn't have questioned it for one second. <laughs> but alas. I would have been like, his dad is from a different country or something like that. But nope, yeah. there's one instance, which could still be excused by that, except for the fact that his dad spelled it on the picture with an L. <sighs> you know, it's not easy. It's hard. Spelling things. They go down into the, uh, oh, right down into the middle of the earth, right? They go deep yep. in a mine. Yeah. They're escaping. <sighs> Uncle Palm's down there. Uncle Palm. Love that crazy old coot. I love him, all right? That is like, he's the best. He's the best. And here's what I love the most about him. Not just his hippy-dippy nonsense that he teaches. I love that he is basically just a jiggling, talking mustache. <laughs> yeah. They were like... I'm not doing any more lip anime. I'm sick of it. Then I'm like, all right, just make him a mustache. You never see his mouth, his teeth, his tongue. It's just a moving mustache in front of his face. I love it. Yeah, you do. That's why you like the little uh, what's-his-face in Howl's Moving Castle. Because he's just... It's not a beard. It's all mustache. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's an it's a ankle-length mustache. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He, I mean, was, he was fun. He um, drugged the children and then showed them the sparkly rocks. How about them crystals? Am I right? The ethereal? You know, the crystals, people, there are people, I, I'm going to blow your mind. There are people here who don't understand the healing power of crystals. Mm-hmm. You and I do, certainly. <laughs> Uncle Palm does, 100%. You know? I told you that necklace wasn't crystals. I wanted it to be crystals. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like some dumb rock with the, oh, it's got this kind of acid in it. I'm like, I want a necklace made out of harmonic crystals with resonant energy. I don't want something that's like actually kind of scientific. I want energy nope. crystals. Just give me the crystals and make sure they got extra energy. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I mean, when you... Before, like, the actual, like, stuff happens, he's like, Earth, oh, she's always talking to you. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been shrooming hard in this mine for months, maybe even years. Uncle to who? Who's he an uncle to? His name's Uncle Palm. We know that Patsy was an orphan. If he's his real uncle, why isn't he taking care of him? <sighs> Who's he uncle to? I think he's Patsu's dad. <laughs> and that's why he's like that's what that's what killed him was people telling him he was wrong or something 
because he just took he did so many cave mushrooms that he forgot <laughs> forgot who he was and thought he was an old <laughs> cave hermit. <laughs> what does he do down there? How does he eat? What does he eat? I mean, what did they eat? Well, he made him some food. Also, he knows I know where that the there's one is. thing that grows in in caves and it's mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's all he's been eating. Well, Maybe I mean, some bugs of some, some kind, some ma- maggots. So he knows where the exit is, and the exit does seem to be, I don't know. You're telling me he's left that mine? Five minutes. I think he has people meet him at the entrance on a regular basis. And he produces things that nobody <laughs> asks him where they come from. <laughs> but they trade food for what he gives them. Oh, man. All I right. think... <laughs> He's giving them rocks of a certain kind. <laughs> Crack. Oh. I think he's a drug dealer. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so they they Crystals. make it out of there some way or Crystal. another. <laughs> crystals. He's making the crystals down there. He's got crystal meth lab operating yeah. in the in the hearth of Mother. Why Gaia. do you think he was so keen to get them kids out of there? <laughs> I don't even know. So they make it out of there. They go back. And then the pirates are waiting for them. They have... Okay. For an orphan, Patsu has got stockpiled. I mean, he's got roasts, hams, lobster. These people have raided his pantry and his fridge. And they've made a feast and they're waiting for him when they get back. All right? The pirates are there. Mama Dula is there. Here's one thing I learned about her. She does not know... How to eat lobster? Have you ever eaten? Have seen someone eat lobster with the shell on, just crunched through the shell? Only I've watched. Animated. I've watched a grown man eat an entire rack of ribs, including the bones. All right, I have done that. I've witnessed it. It is painful to watch and to listen to. I think the lobster thing hurt me more. I was like, it's you're just munching on the shell. You can't eat lobster shell, can you? It can't be good. Okay, I know you can't eat it, right? I know you could. Physically, you could crunch it in half and get it down your gullet. It can't be good for you. Here's the thing, Cody. Hmm. Life <laughs> finds a way. <laughs> All right? So. So what? <laughs> but it did look very similar to like, here's what it reminded me of. You know in the Emperor's New Groove, when Potch is just munching through that pill bug exoskeleton? Oh, yeah. 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 That's what it reminded me. Yeah, of. no, that's uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Ah, so uh, I don't know. They figure out they're gonna team up or something. Yeah. Good times. So that well, yeah. So he comes back after they get captured by the military. Oh well, yeah, they get captured the military, and then uh, they're in prison. He's in prison, and. Mark Hamill's like, all right, Sheeta, hey, you, we're going to let your friend go, all right? And you're going to come with me, and that's, we've got to do this thing. That's when the possibly metal and or ceramic that's robot. That's we found the metal ceramic robot. Sheeta says a little spell. The robot comes to life. It has wings. It has very dangerous lasers. Yeah. It so gets revealed that Sheeta is the... Sheeta is the heir, heir to Laputa. Yeah. She's the Laputian princess. Yeah. Of old, and Mark Hamill is the creepy Laputian Uncle King, right? Yeah, the that's Duke the twist. of Laputa. That's the twist at the very end there. So, is who's the real heir? That's because the, they're both royal blood. Well, that's that's the other like kind of creepy overtone. I was like, uh, he's gonna make that child his bride, and they're gonna well, rule Laputa. To be fair, it's been seven hundred years since they came from the same group of people. Yeah, but I, it's just the child thing. And I know he never explicitly says it, but he's like, hey, you're there, you know. You know, I mean, like, my wife and I are, you go back 700 years, and I think you would hit a common ancestor. Yeah, for sure. The Duke of something, I know that. That's all I know. He's the Duke of Esselton or something. Yeah. yeah. Weaselton. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know. That's not as creepy as the fact that he's a grown man and she's 13. Yeah. So, the... All right. Much like 
Queen Amidala. Yeah, you're right. But he was nine and she was 13. Which is worse, I think. <laughs> we need to do those movies sometime soon. You need to scratch that itch, you know? Yeah. They make it to Laputa. He reveals that he knows everything. And he's, okay, why is this book tiny? Why is the book tiny? He's got a tiny book with all the info he knows about Laputa, which is a lot. But the book is about, like, the height of his thumb. Yeah. And he kind of sits in his palm and he flicks through it. It's cute. It's so tiny. It's uh, it's an aesthetic. It's like, because, I mean, I have in my bag, you've seen it, a little tiny notebook. Right. But it would be... I mean, it's too small to be useful, certainly, but he seems to get a lot out of it. I mean, it has the the, the knowledge of 700 years mm-hmm. <laughs> of royal lineage history in it. It feels like you would have filled that up in five minutes of research. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But he's got it. He knows all the things, but somehow... But so It's like she is... So that's why I'm wondering if he is like this sub-house... She's like the descendant of the real ones. If she knew the magic, he didn't. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. How did he find out he was of royal blood? That's my thing. Because like she, it's like, oh, she, her mother taught her some of the Laputian spells and Laputian language. Yeah, that one. And uh, But his thing is just like, I know all the stuff. That's what I'm saying. I think it might have been like a lesser house where they're like, King's like, nah, we're leaving. And they're like, no, I want to stay. And he's like, too bad. We're going. And they're like, all right. In 700 years, after we've forgotten about this place, Mm -hmm. we'll come back. Laputa's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, There's a robot there. He's taking care of the animals. He's a sweet boy. Let's talk about those robot walking sounds. They're delightful. It was like, pew, bow, pew, bow, pew, bow. Yeah, I you did it. it perfectly, I think, really. I liked it. They were as delightful as the sounds in uh, War of the Worlds are terrifying. Mm, yeah. Fun fact, War of the Worlds, the only movie I've ever walked out of. <laughs> the was... Tom... Wait, the Tom Cruise one? Yeah. <laughs> when, they, when they're in the basement and the eye thing's coming in, I was like, it's too much. I'm going to fake like I have to pee. and I'm... I did have to pee so bad. Yeah. So I left. So I didn't have to see what happened. I haven't seen that one. It got me as a kid. Mm, I was Tyler. a wee boy because it was theaters and it was new. And I was only like 18. I don't know. I don't know how old I was when I came out. You were old enough. Tyler, I have something to share with you. Yeah. I know I've talked a lot. I've thrown a lot, spat a lot of game about the worst fun fact. Yeah. I think I found the true worst fun fact. The worst trivia I've ever seen on IMDb. Now, can we take a moment? Yeah. This is going up against a license plate number. (laughs) I'll remind you. So do you want to stick with your claim? Well, it's definitely up there. I'll leave it up to the listener to decide. But there's also a disturbing fact around the fun fact. So in a way, it is a good fun fact. No, it'll, it'll be interesting to share. Okay. Okay, it's like, fun fact, and it's, it, it goes like such. Director trademark, semicolon, Sheeta. Six out of nine people found that interesting. What? Okay, here's the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you the fun fact again. Director trademark, semicolon, Sheeta. Who are these six? Six. <laughs> sick individuals who are they who is out here praising this trivia fact that is essentially meaningless i don't know who are they i don't know if you name names i I need some names and uh if you listen to this podcast i need you to tweet me at opinion havers and tell me why 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 but you said there's is that the disturbing fact no, the disturbing thing is that six out of nine, like, they're batting this, you know, a 67%, you know? How? This, this leads me into a side note. Do you know what 
the numbers of batting averages are? Oh, I know that batting averages are usually between two and four hundred, right? Huh. Which means okay, so if you're if your batting average is two hundred, that means that two out of ten times you're at bat, you get a hit, right? Right. So three fifty is a great batting average. Four hundred is like incredible. Um, so I, I understand that like a six hundred batting average would be amazing. Well, no, it's, I mean, it comes to my, uh, when I said I'm batting 100, and I was like, oh, he's going with the joke, and then you were saying batting a six or something like that, and I was like, maybe you don't know what the batting I, I See, I thought you meant, like, batting a 1,000. That's what no, I I said. I meant what I said. Batting 100. Batting 100. The joke was... Hey, that's enough to get you on JV. It's a small number. I was like a pitcher's batting average, <laughs> Yeah. All right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I I was so upset by it because I was like, this means nothing. And you're trying to say something, but you haven't communicated. Like, gave me a sentence being like, oh, because I know, I think I've heard some people like, oh, like Miyazaki kind of used the same model for a lot of like the the women and the protagonists in his story. So, like, I guess like she does maybe kind of like Kiki and Kiki's don't, movie service. And, like, no. I think that's don't. what they were going for. No. But also, I don't think that's a good fact, you know? Don't. Don't give them the credit. Don't try to make their fact a good fact. It's Sorry. a bad fact. Okay, I do have a problem with this movie. <gasps> no. Okay, remember? No. This dog. Okay. There's a part of this movie. Patsu is trying to catch up to where Shita is, and Shita's in the clutches of Mark Hamill. And he's giving the whole speech, and they're in the deep in the thralls of the technology center of Laputa, and he's doing the thing and moving the stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a part where Mark Hamill shoots Sheeta. He fires a gun, she collapses. They never address it again, and she's just fine later on. See, that's what I thought as well. We both said it in the movie, and I was like, I think I think they did the, you know, like the cartoon person got shot kind of thing where gun was fired. The person got so scared they fell over. Okay, so that's one. That's one explanation. Yeah. The other is they talked about how there are healing spells. <gasps> so was she healed by the power of Laputa and they just never showed that? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. But why would she just collapse? Like, if anything, she just shot the gun, she would have, like, stopped. It's like an old guard. Where he, sh- where, uh, I almost said Uma Thurman, but Charlize Theron shoots, uh, the other girl in the head. Yeah. In her, her dreads, we, what is it? Was it a, a, a dreads? Braids. 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 I believe is the word I was going yeah. for. The braids heal. Yeah. That's what was happening here. It's the same concept. All right, fair enough. I mean, I just thought that was something. She like, is an immortal, <laughs> and soon Charlize Theron. You like how I say your name? I know you do. I know you've noticed, and you've said nothing, and it kills me. Uh, she's gonna show up and take her on an adventure where a lot of people get uh, slashed with axes. Yeah, you know. I don't know. So I guess okay. And then finally, what's the moral of it? Here's the thing. The the moral of this movie. Okay, this is the thing. Teach me. So, because there's the speech that Sheeta gives in the throne room where she gives, like, the reason why she was told. Because they, didn't they say, they're like, this is why our people left. And you're like, you, you didn't. Did you know you were from here? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's a separate thing. <laughs> where... Uh, yeah. So maybe she knew that she's from there, but not that she was royal. I don't know. Anyway, she's like, "This is why they left because if you live in the sky, you can't be connected to the ground, and the ground is the earth." Mm. All right. <laughs> Which yeah, okay. Land the city. I don't know. 
feels like there's better ways than to <laughs> say... Just letting the city adrift in, yeah. into the ether, never to be discovered Let's again. Let's leave this city that some douche with a necklace can show up and unleash an army of robots. Oh, and just an incredible power that could not be matched by any... And even 700 years later that, you know... Yeah. You know, world-conquering power. Let's oh, just leave yeah. it. You know, let's not do anything with it. Uh... Or there, so there's that speech, and then there's that at the very end where Patsu, what does he say? I don't know. The problem is I don't remember. My note was too vague. What was your note? It might help me remember. Quite a moral. Oh. I know. It's not helpful. <laughs> that would be like me going, I'm to be putting, uh, a trivia fact, quite a moral. <laughs> That's what I you should do. Get. But like, I don't know, because they delve all the way into like, Oh, greed and technology and conquering and the balance of machine versus nature and yeah, you know, like they really get into it. And I'm like, this is kind of a children's movie, right? Yeah. And then there's like a greedy man who shoots people and is prepared to conquer the world. And um, but in the end, wasn't it the friendships that we made along the way, or what was it? It was something for sure. I'm looking at the quotes to see if it's going to be at the top. You know. Muska, that's the name of Mark Hamill's characters. Oh, oh yeah, Muska. Muska. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm seeing a lot of quotes from Dola. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot. Like, all of her lines in the whole movie. I'm getting nothing. I'm I'm getting it's like everybody's like uh Yeah, it's like everybody's like, "Oh, here's every single quote from Dola and Muska." Also, there's maybe two other characters in the film and I'm like, "Come on, you people, you give me facts like Okay, it's nowhere. It's nowhere. It's nowhere in the list, Cody. It's no. I've scrolled through the whole one, the whole one. Uh huh. All of it. There's the whole conversation where the boys are dumbfounded that their mom was once like a a young girl with p- pigtails that gets shot off. Oh yeah, I forgot he shoots off the pigtails. Yeah, he does which shoot some, which is symbolic of. Her not being like Dola. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It was something. What did he say? Now it's going to bug me forever. Because, yeah, he says something like, yeah, and it's all about being true to yourself. Away. And then they fly away. Mm. Um. Uh, here's a little fun fact: the the spell of destruction, which is Balus, that's in the quotes. Oh, okay, that's the other thing. When she does the other spell, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. And now they're like, it's one word. What's well, destroy? Probably. Well, it's funny because they're just like, okay, let's say it together. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be like a th- a, a thing. And then it's like Balus. She's like, oh, uh, I don't know why I wanted more, but I did. Because Cody. It's easy to destroy, but hard to build. That's the moral. There we go. However, I think... This is from the internet, Geeks Under Grace. However, I think one of the lessons of Castle Castle in the Sky teaches is, regardless of what people call themselves or what title they seem to have, you'll know a person or a group by the values they live out. Yeah. It's like in Megamind. Always have a dream and believe in it, even if something as crazy as cat, if it is as some, even if it's crazy. What? Have a dream and believe in it. That's what we learned. Nice. Also, where's that castle fallen? It's fallen out of the sky. Someone's going to die, right? I told you it was going into space. Oh, are you talking about the bits? Oh, <laughs> the, well, I was talking about the bits, but you called it because you were like... <laughs> <laughs> send the castle up into space and then the end credits it shows it like hovering above the earth 
Yeah, because it's a giant tree. And I was like, mm, space tree. <laughs> you were like, you looked at me like I was the stupidest person ever. And, and then, then space they do. tree. And those poor animals, like they showed a whole thing of like, oh, this robot takes care of the animals and look at how beautiful the nature is and we should leave Lappy to... <laughs> you send them to space, they're all going to die. Look. Except for the robot. They're happy in space and the robot... Cast, iron, enamel. <laughs> the robot is there to protect them. From space. The city probably had shields. Yeah. They're gone now, though. They are. It's just that crystal. Um, you know, there's nothing else, nothing else protecting it. So, Tyler, after all this discussion, um, how, how, where are you landed on this one? I think this one is a solid... 12.5 out of 17 minus 4 plus 2. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty high praise. I thought it was pretty good. It didn't hold up quite as well as some of the other ones, but I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood for like a slow burn family adventure animated movie with some pretty serious lessons to learn. Yeah. But it's a good it is a good one. There are some great gags and uh it is it's well done. There's some really good characters in it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's good stuff, and it's, you know, after watching Grave of the Fireflies, every Miyazaki movie is fun and lighthearted. It's core. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I did see, while scrolling through some uh, art student's analysis, I'm sure, yeah. some film student's analysis of the movie, the only other traditional villain that uh, Miyazaki has is in the other movie. Yeah. Tales of Earthsea. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah. I'm interested to see that because I think it's based on the same source material as like a Sci Fi Channel miniseries I remember <laughs> watching. That was really good because it was like back when they did like the big budget ones like Dune, but better than Dune. Right. <laughs> you know? So it was like when they were doing stuff before they were like, you know what? You can take this over HBO, <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. We'll uh, not do that, and we'll just make 17 Sharknados. Mm. <laughs> Can you even wait till next Shark Week? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I like this one. I like How's the Movie Castle better. I think so, too, which kind of surprised me, because I, I don't know why I never gave it the props it deserved. Maybe because, uh, you know, uh, whatever. It's a good one. How's Beautiful, Calcifer's Adorable. This one, you got Dola. Mm -hmm. You do have Mark Hamill. So here's the question. Who's better, really, when it comes down to it? Mark Hamill or Christian Bale? Who's better? Who do you think did a better performance? As the two, probably the two like n biggest names of the two movies. Right? I mean, I think Christian Bale's performance in Howl's Moving Castle was better than Mark. <gasps> I think Mark Hamill gave a great performance, but Mark Hamill... It was like this Shakespearean voice acting performance of the f guy from Frasier, and I preferred the more. Is that what you got for me? Dulled under out of uh, the Christian Bale performance, because what his voice came across to me was very soothing and sensual, even in the <laughs> beginning. Wait, and then it slowly turned into like a more subdued. Oh, and then at, towards the end, pretty much fully Joker. Voice. Yeah, it does get much closer to that. You're so right. I like that he got he sounded crazier and crazier as the movie. That's went a good on. point. Yeah, no, he also I, at I some think point he gave a very good performance. I just yeah. if you're making me pick between him and Christian Bale's performance, I'm gonna pick Christian Bale's performance. But also, but Christian, I mean, Bale, you got to root for Hal, whereas Mark Hamill's the bad guy. He did yeah, a good but, job. You know, what? What about James Vanderbeek? Yeah, I stay, I liked Vanderbeek. Here's okay. Here's what I think your problem with Vanderbeek's performance is: it's very much a grown man doing a whiny teenager. But was, was he a grown man in the '80s? They didn't dub this in the '80s. When did they dub it? I think they dubbed this in the '90s. Was he a grown man in the '90s? Or he I was playing a teenager know. in Dawson's Creek in the '90s, right? Yeah, but they don't cast a lot of teen. <sighs> All right, let's do a deep dive on Vanderbeek's. 
Yeah, I don't know exactly when. Um... Here's what I think really comes down to, because I also had a little bit of a problem with Christian Bale's performance at the beginning until, you know, I thought about it more and grew, grew to new and understand how. Mm-hmm. It's because when you watch anime, I'm so used to getting exaggerated, even like, even just like with Mark Hamill going the crazy voice, you know? Yeah. So to have just a normal voice in an anime is weird just because of the types of anime I've always watched. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. I mean, the Ghibli ones are much more average dub. You know, it's more like a normal voice, American voice production versus like a kind of over the top for a lot of like the anime TV shows you might see. Yeah. They're super stylized. James Vanderbeek was 22 when he did the dub for He was a child. You know? Yeah. You know, he was just a little boy. Hmm. I was about to say he's two years. He's a whole two years younger than me, but it's four years. Four, yeah, Cody, you're old enough I to don't, dub a Studio Ghibli movie. I don't. I don't remember my age. Kareem Abdul's son was just charged with stabbing his neighbor with a hunting knife during an argument over trash cans. All right, you could share us <laughs> on any of the podcast services. Uh, you know, the Google Play. I got that from away. the ESPN app. <laughs> mine, mine went off the last night. The son of a very famous basketball player stabbed a man over trash can. Sports. We might be on Pandora pretty soon. You know, who knows? I'll never, <laughs> who knows? I haven't checked. Stuff. The, here's the thing. I was about to say I've gotten the email back. I haven't checked the email. So. Oh, Tyler, get on. Let's get in that inbox. Let's get in that inbox. In that inbox. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, also tweet me, at Opinion Havers. You can, yeah. you can rage tweet me all you want. Uh, you can also make requests. We take requests. We don't do them because your requests are weird, people. <laughs> you, you, well, we, we got the two requests request. we've gotten, we, we did one of them. What was one? One was Mystery Men. Oh, yeah. I think one was Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. We've gotten three requests, haven't we? And then one was uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, one was emailed Doctor Who. I'll find it. My my wife is a huge Doctor Who fan. I'm going to put her on the case. I Actually, bet she I will think have the, it Actually, I think the correct use is Doctor Whom. Well, Doctor. <laughs> Doctor <laughs> How. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for listening. And until next time, watch movies. And have opinions. So do you think like the pirates and Porco Rosso is like her brother or something? I think they're the grandchildren of uh of uh Mamadula's many children. <laughs>